I was excited because I've never been to NASA. We decided to make a camera trap. You could find out what animals are in certain areas. I'm really excited to see what we got on camera. Major funding for Sci Girls is provided by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research across all fields of science and engineering. The National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Additional funding is provided by PPG Foundation aims to bring color and brightness to communities around the world. Cargill, helping the world thrive. And Craig Newmark Philanthropies. Bakersville Bigfoot? Uh, last time I checked, no. Because he doesn't exist. Really? Look! Uh, half-eaten apple? Look at the teeth marks! Are... tiny? Exactly. Everyone knows the Bakersfield Bigfoot has tiny teeth. If there was a Bakersfield Bigfoot, tiny teeth seem unlikely. But what if it's him, Is Seeing him is on my bucket list. I've been camping out for days, but I can't stay awake to catch him. Or her, the Bakersfield Bigfoot could be a girl. Oh, what am I saying? There is no Bakersfield Bigfoot. Look, I don't believe in the Bakersfield Bigfoot, but I do believe in asking for help. <laughs> to prove you wrong. Sci Girls, we need you. This looks promising. I saw a couple of birds and two deers. It's the Hollywood sign! I've got such a good view. <laughs> <laughs> it's Griffith Observatory. I love learning about space there. My name is Rahina. I know Karen and Trinity because we all go to school together. And I think space exploration is cool because you can always find out something new. Should we keep going? I am Trinity. What I like about engineering is trying things over and over again. You can always improve on something. There's so many birds! Caca, caca! <laughs> My name's Karen. The thing that I like about science is that there's a lot of hands-on things. And the thing that I like about technology is that you can see new things happen. LA is amazing. Yeah, it is. Wow. So today we're at JPL. This is so exciting. I was excited because I've never been to anything related to NASA. And we got to meet one of their engineers. Welcome to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. My name's Janelle, and I work as an instrument operations engineer. She uses instruments like cameras to collect data. Here, we're primarily responsible for building robots that do space exploration and bring science data back here to Earth. So over here, you'll see the Mission Cassini. And this is actually a project that I worked on when I started working here at JPL. Two, one, and liftoff of the Cassini spacecraft on a billion mile trek to Saturn. What's amazing about Cassini is that it went to Saturn and it orbited it for about 14 years. My job on the Cassini mission was to operate the cameras. So how do you take a picture when Cassini is far, far away at Saturn? You send commands to it. The instrument receives them and then learns, oh, you want me to take five pictures at this time. It takes those five pictures and then it sends that information back to us here on Earth where we can look at those images. 
This is a moon called Enceladus. Cassini actually found out something game-changing about this moon, that most likely there is water running under the surface of this moon. If there's water, does there mean that there's life? That's what a lot of us are dying to know. If there is water, then there could be life. We want to know more. I've gotten to use different types of cameras on a couple of missions here at JPL. On the right, you have the visible light. This is what me and you see every day. And then on the left, we have the infrared light. And infrared tells us the temperature of the things that we're looking at. Your foreheads are white, right? And your face is because you're really hot there. And then like your shirt's cooler than your face, right? That's why you got the greens and blues. This is actually JPL's indoor Mars yard. It's an area where we can test our models of landers and rovers. They set up with sand and rocks to simulate how it would be on a planet. We drove a rover to simulate what it's like to drive on different planets and how it's challenging to do it from so far away. Well, like start turning around. It was challenging because we weren't able to look at the rover while we were driving it. Yay! Yeah, great job. How was it? Fun. It's fun. Really, it's fun, but it's hard. Challenging. Yeah. It's really rewarding when you do a good job and you can finish like you girls did. We're talking to satellites and spacecraft at Earth, the Moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and even out of our solar system. Being here was kind of like a dream come true because I got to actually see a branch of NASA. So how did you guys like it? It was, it was so, so much, much fun. fun. After the tour, we asked Janelle if she could help us out in building something with cameras that could help our community. Cameras, similar to the ones I use in space, can be used here on Earth. I have a friend who would love your help. Dare mighty things. Janelle was telling us about a scientist that needed our help. So we went to the Natural History Museum to get an idea of what kind of project we want to do with a camera. Welcome to the P22 exhibit. I'm Miguel. Miguel taught us that cameras are helpful to biologists yeah. because you could find out what animals are in certain areas. Wildlife biologists use a special tool called a camera trap, which is a motion-activated camera to document wildlife that are harder to document because they come out at night when we're usually asleep and they tend to be more shy and elusive. One great example of what can come of camera trapping is P22. P22 stands for Puma 22, meaning that he's a 22nd Puma studied in the local LA area. It was surprising that P22 was in Griffith Park because mountain lions are usually found in the San Monica Mountains and it would have to cross the freeways to get to Griffith Park. P22 is creating awareness by showing that community members and wild animals can live in the same area. Here we've arrived at one of our camera trap locations that's helping us monitor wildlife that's coming through the nature gardens here at night when the museum's closed. We decided to make a camera trap using things that you can get around your community. Some environmental factors that you want to consider, make sure that your camera is weatherproof, at least to some extent. What else should we be thinking about when building the camera? It's good to have a, a camera that's set up with infrared flash, if you can, because that flash usually isn't seen by the animal, and even, even if it is, it really doesn't bother the animal or feel make it feel vulnerable. Thank you so much for your help. We're gonna go design our camera. Scientists can't go everywhere, and they would like to know what animals are in different communities. If community members record wildlife using a camera, they can help scientists know what's going on on their property. Hi, I'm Trinity. I'm 12 and I'm in seventh grade. And this is my family. This is my brother. This is my mom. Hello. My dad. Hey there. I also like to cook. I also like to do my hair when I don't have like any homework to do. So this is Momo. He likes to wear different stuff like ties. So for one of my school projects, we had to enlarge an object, so I chose a book. Bye, see you again soon. Say bye, Mama. Hi, everyone.
everybody. Hi, Hi Janelle. We came to my house to start working on our design. I brought some components that you guys might find useful, so let's go check it out. The first step we did was looking at the different parts we can add. Janelle showed us some of the cameras we had three to choose from, and we chose the IR camera because it makes the animals less scared than a usual flash. And we used a motion sensor so that it could trigger the camera to take a photo and video. If we had a camera without a motion sensor, the camera would be going all night and you'll have hours and hours of just like grass or just the scenery. This is actually a small computer and that'll act as the brains of our operation. The Raspberry Pi is a computer that we can program. We used it because we needed to use something that would send commands to the camera and to the sensor. We decided to draw our diagram to get an idea on how all the parts will go together connecting to the IR camera, which is the big camera. I basically did the same thing as you, but upside down. Let's start hooking stuff together. First the blue. Now we have the motion sensor. Five volt. Mm -hmm. The green into the out ground. Go ahead, let's power it on. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Okay. Great, everyone. We decided to start pseudocode. It's code, but we use everyday language. What do we want our computer to, to do? In the night, nothing's like moving, but then if it sends in something in front of it, then it will like turn like the camera on. The benefit of writing pseudocode before programming on the computer is so that you have a clear definition and an understanding of what you want the camera and the motion sensor to do. So you would say like, we want the camera to record something for five seconds and then stop. And then once we had that done, we could easily do it in code form. Doing this will make it so much easier to put this into Python. The computer language that we are using is Python. Believe it or not, in the engineering world, people don't like to start from scratch. We didn't have to start writing our code from scratch. We got to use a website that already had a code that existed, and then we could modify it so we could use it for our camera trap. It's really nice to be able to have a starting point and use those instructions to help you move forward. Open idle to go to the menu and choose programming. We had to modify the code for the different sensors. Click on file, and this should open up a second window in which you can create your code. Number one, write some code to set up your sensor in the GPIO4. First, we tested the motion sensor. So this says that it's plugged into GPIO4? Oh, wait, no, it's 14. It's 14. Oh. Uh, so let's edit this to instead say 14 instead of four and it would turn on when it sensed motion and it would turn it off when it didn't. All your code looks great, and I think we're ready to test it. Congrats, guys! Woo <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Rahina, and I am 12 years old, and I'm also in the seventh grade. This is my beautiful mom. One of my favorite things to do is build different contraptions, like this Ferris wheel right here. I love to dance. I study over 10 different dance styles. Another thing I like to do is to make slime. Another thing I like to do is to practice calligraphy. Bye! We set up our yard like the Mars yard at JPL. We had several different tests. To test our IR camera, we used a box to simulate nighttime. We should put the, the box, box on to make sure that it's there's no motion detected. Yeah, there. No motion detected. Oh, yeah. And then we also used a wind-up toy chicken. Put it inside the box. We winded up the toy, put it under the box, and then the chicken started walking. It's so cute! The, the, it turned like black and white. Yeah, so the it goes like works. black and white. The most fun part of building the camera, when we were testing the motion sensor to see how far it could go. Seven feet, 11, yeah. 20 feet. Why don't you go all the way back? I didn't know how sensitive the motion sensor was. 
The motion sensor can detect everything in the yard. That's great. If it was in the dark, you could see something 25 feet away. That was very interesting. For the case for our camera, we used a plastic food container. Yeah, I think that'll fit. So that it could be element proof, and we also cut holes in it for the camera lens, the cord, and a tripod stand. We decided to use a tripod to mount the camera. It's very easy to adjust the angle of the camera. We should probably test it on a smaller animal. We set up several different tests, one which we attracted an animal, which was my dog. We just put food in front of the camera to see if he would come and if the motion sensor got him. He did not trust us at first, and then he went and got it. And the camera got him eating, and so did the motion sensor. Good job, Momo. Good job. Good job. OK, I think we're ready to set up our camera. The spot over here? Yeah. This is right here. So why did you guys choose this spot? Well, because uh, you can see almost the entire yard from this point. And it ha also has a little bit of shade. A good thing about the tripod is that it's adjustable. So you can move it up higher if there's maybe a taller animal in the neighborhood. I think it's a good spot. We also tilted the camera a little down so because the animals will be more down here because we won't have huge pumas out here. Yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure to plug it in before it gets dark. We made two cameras to test one here at my house and one at the Natural History Museum. This is smokeweed. And we decided to put it in like a little alley. You can see this is a nice clear path for animals to use. That was far from where people walk, so if an animal comes in that little alley, it would be left alone and not bothered by any humans. We thought animals would go there because we also saw scat and we also saw eaten fruit. And we know that if there is eaten fruit and it wasn't eaten completely, the animal might come back to finish it. What direction would you want to face it? Um, you Maybe like in like, that corner yeah. and face it outward. Here? Yeah. So we should probably tilt it down. Good job, everyone. <laughs> oh, awesome. I borrowed this equipment from the lab at school. Come on, let's make a camera trap. Oh, uh, hand me that monitor. Here's the sensors. Got it. Keyboard. Got it. Mouse. <laughs> Got it. We have a brand new camera with motion sensor. Oh, I'm so excited to write the code. I'm excited to catch the Bakersfield Bigfoot. All right, the code's written and the computer is hooked up. Is did I grow into my cheekbones? Like seriously, I look good. <laughs> Come on, supermodel. Let's test it. Camera's ready. Cue cheese. And action. Go, boy. <gasps> the sensor light came on. It worked. By tomorrow, we'll have seen the Bakersfield Bigfoot. By tomorrow, we'll know if there's a Bakersfield Bigfoot. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. Hopefully your cameras were able to see some pretty cool stuff. I'm really excited to see what we got on camera. I was kind of hoping to see animals. I think the, the white is when it waits. So oh my, so many. It's a lot. Did you see anything? I don't know, I think I saw an arm. Oh uh, no, that's just a smudge. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like a flash. Like that? I don't see anything. There's so many videos. All I see is the grass. Mm -hmm. It was kind of disappointing, but at least we got some footage of like an animal. <laughs> it's <a> morning. <laughs> it was Momo eating, but still footage. So at least we know it was sensing something. Yeah. On the first night of testing at the museum. <gasps> oh my God. To see that footage, it was very exciting. Oh, oh we saw glowing eyes. It's big. Yeah. You can see like a shadow of it too. Yeah. It, is this a type of animal that you guys normally see during the day? No. Mm -mm. Oh my wow. God, that's, that's, that's really clear. We saw a possum just walking around and then picking up and dropping an orange. 
Would you girls call that a success? Yes. Yeah. Yes? We still have another night to get some footage. So what can you think of to make our chances better? Is there a way to reduce how many videos we have to look through? Yeah, in fact, right now, the videos are taking about 10 seconds. After seeing the test footage from the first night, we decided to add pictures before and after the video started. And then we also increased the time for the video to 25 seconds. Let's add a new line to take a picture before we take the video. If you can copy this whole line right here, Something that I find challenging about computer programming is that if you make like one small mistake, like if you don't put a period in its place or if you don't put a dash in its place, you have to go through every single line of code to check if it's right. We want to change that to say dot .jpeg, dot .jpeg. Now our code is going to take pictures. Yay! <laughs> the improvements that we decided to make to the camera were it would take a photo before the video starts and after the video starts, just in case we missed the animal in the video. Instead of putting it on our camera on a tripod, we decided to put it on like piles of bricks and put some like little wood chips. We would get the whole body because it was more level to its height. For the second night of testing at Trinity's house, we decided to put it in her front yard where it's more accessible for animals. And we put it in the corner, the very corner of the front yard so that we could see the whole yard. Can't wait to okay. see what we get. Yeah. Hi, my name is Karen. I'm 12 years old and I live in Los Angeles. This is my sister, Kaylee. She's five. Hi. I have been doing music for six years. This is my mom, her name is Yacelia. She um, is right now cooking nopales, and she's been the one that has uh, pushed me to do things that I didn't know that I could do. I'm really proud of her. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Come on, I can't wait to see what we get. Yeah, me too. Maybe this time it'll be better with the pictures and the video. We went to the museum to look at the second night of footage. Oh, I did too. Oh, there's some eye shine. First, we saw two little eyes come popping out of nowhere. Oh, oh, oh. It's Momo. Momo. <laughs> it was Momo again. So that's a perfect height. If that dog is triggering the camera, then it will trigger animals about that same size. So it looks like it's working perfectly. On the second night of recording at the museum, we got a lot more possum footage. Oh, oh my, you can actually see the body. We saw another possum. We saw it walk away, it was kind of strutting. I think it worked a lot better because you got to see the whole animal. A couple of times it just came up and was like right there. It was sniffing the camera or it brushed the camera. It was really cool. How about you display what you made here at the museum? Miguel invited us to go to the Natural History Museum in a couple of days to present our camera trap to friends and family and also visitors at the museum. Great job. Today we are at my house working on our museum display. For our name, we use an acronym that stands for each of our names, just like NASA uses acronyms for naming their robots. It stands for Technology Research Knowledge. It's also Trinity, Rahina, and Karen. Which way do we want the poster, like this? Trinity is choosing like the videos that we got really good footage in, and me and Rahina are doing the poster. We are making a website so that people in our communities will have an idea on how to build their own camera traps. Look, I think we're ready. Yeah! I'm so excited. excited. Yeah. I'm excited to show what we've done at the museum because I want to show what I've learned and I want to show what a wildlife camera is. Yeah, it worked. Okay. We decided to wear NASA shirts because that was the first place we actually learned about how scientists use cameras for research. I think something that helped us keep on going was the fact that we could make our own camera and present it to everyone. Oh, th that's what it would look like. It would be black and white. And then this is a motion sensor that we also use. I have chickens, so if we had a nighttime camera, I could know if there's anything endangering my chickens. 
I hope that the people who came to see our project, that they learn how they can make something that's not that hard to make. To share our research and to share our project feels really great. First we had to do pseudocode and then we had to make that into Python. Some people were asking for our link so that they can make their own. I felt really great about that. I just want to quickly stress how important what you're doing is and how inspiring it is, especially for local community members that are your age. Thank you. Good job. I feel like our project will really help a lot of people and will really help our community. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you welcome. Thank you. Girls, I'm so impressed by everything you did. Age doesn't matter when it comes to being able to work with electronics and build wildlife cameras and anything else you put your mind to. I want to let kids know that they can make technology at home. I know it looks really hard, but once you understand it, it will all make sense. I think technology does help us understand the world and the universe better. Dear Mighty Things! <laughs>